you're about to see is a real-life story taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock, Captain Braddock, ready. This racket grew out of the fact that the past decades of wars, depressions, and post-war problems have brought mothers into the working world. Each working mother is faced with the serious problem of daily care for her child, a place where she can leave her baby and know that it will receive proper supervision, good food, adequate rest, and loving care. All this on a limited budget. It was a situation like this that brought the case of Lillian Lester to my attention. Her story was on the front page of the newspapers when a woman named Hetty Wilson came into my office. Captain Braddock, they told me I could see you now. Certainly. Won't you come in? My name is Hetty Wilson, Captain. I have a brother on the police force, and he suggested that I tell you what's on my mind. All right. You talk, and I'll listen. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Why, that's the case I want to talk to you about. That Mrs. Lester is just about as sweet and loving as a mother could be. And they've got no call to try and take her baby away from her. But according to the report here... It's... Captain Braddock, maybe it is true that the baby didn't get good care. But I think Mrs. Lester's got taken in by a racket. What do you mean, Hetty? I do day cleaning, Captain. And one of my weekly jobs is for a lady who has a house right next door to the Westward Nursery School, where that little girl went. You see, Mrs. Lester's husband died of pneumonia, and... Oh, here's my big girl, all ready for Betty Bye. Way past her bedtime, too. Give Graham and Grandpa a big good night kiss. Oh. Mm. I put on some coffee. Oh, well, you're an angel. I could do with some. Now, kiss Aunt Susan, and then off to bed we go. Good night, darling. Oh, that's good. Come on. Come on. And say good night to my daddy. Daddy isn't here tonight, darling. Daddy working, Mommy, is he? I'd better see the coffee. John. Yes, dear. Have you given any thought to Sandy? What do you mean? Well, a young girl like Lillian with no family to help. We are her family, Anna. Oh, of course. But what I mean is, poor Larry didn't need any insurance and very little money. And we know that Lillian can't keep up this apartment and take care of Sandy. So there's just one thing to be done. What's that? We'll take Sandy to live with us. She's always been very close to us. You can't take Sandy away from her mother. Oh, but Lillian will be welcome to our home, too, of course. Oh, Mother, don't start planning Lillian's life for her. Your tone implies that I'm interfering. I'm merely saying that Sandy must be our first consideration now. And you go right to sleep. Shh. Later. Mm, that coffee smells awfully good, please. Good. Have some. Lillian, dear, about Sandy. You must know that Father and I are very concerned about her welfare. And yours, too, of course. You needn't worry, Mother. I can take care of Sandy. But how? Well, I worked before I married Larry, and I worked while he was in service. But you didn't have a child then. Surely you must realize what a responsibility that would be. I know, but how do mothers manage? I know, dear, that your thinking is confused tonight. But... Father and I feel that you should let Sandy come and live with us. Please don't think I'm ungrateful, but... Well, this is our home. It, it's where we belong. As long as we stay here, somehow Larry won't seem so far away. But you can't be sentimental at the cost of Sandy's welfare. Sandy will be all right. There's day nurseries where children are well cared for. But you know that I take very good care of Sandy. Please don't misunderstand. I know how you feel, but I've got to work this out in my own way. It's what Larry would have wanted. Of course it is, Lil. And you'll manage just fine. 
I think it's time to go. Come, dear. If you change your mind, our home is always open to you, dear. Don't mind Mother Lil. She means well. I tell you what. I think there's a job opening up at the office. I'll talk to the boss tomorrow. Meanwhile, try and get some rest. And we'll make plans tomorrow night. Larry always said you were the greatest. He did. Funny. Brothers never come right out and say things like that to sisters. But I'm glad. Try and get some sleep. nursery schools charge between 60 and 80 dollars a month some even more oh gosh no what are you going to do mr parker expects you to start work tomorrow i know but even 60 a month for the time i pay the rent and buy food even if i bring my lunch every day well have you tried them all well there's one more i saved it for last because it's on the other side of town i'd have to transfer twice to get to work after i left sandy off in the morning Oh, but Lil, and get to the office by nine? Well, Mr. Parker's death on tardy. Oh, I could make it all right. The Westward Nursery School doesn't cost a million dollars. Well, maybe this is the one. Hello, is this the Westward Nursery School? A Westward Nursery School, Miss Ogden speaking. I uh, saw your advertisement in the paper. Oh, yes, I did advertise. I can take just one more tot into the school. Well, we give them a well-balanced lunch each day. Supervised play by a well-trained teacher. And if the child stays all day, a rest period for a nap. Oh, that sounds perfect, Miss Ogden. Sandy would have to stay all day, but I can't pay too much. Oh, now don't apologize, Mrs. Lester. I opened this school to help the working mother, and I'll cooperate in any way I can. Now, you just bring your little one. Oh, a boy or a girl? A little girl. Her name is Sandra, but we call her Sandy. I'll be there very early in the morning, and... Bless you, Miss Ogden, for helping me out. Isn't that wonderful? Oh. Miss Ogden? Oh, you must be Mrs. Lester. How do you do? How do you do? And this is Sandy. Shake hands with Miss Ogden, darling. Sandy, dear, you mustn't be shy. Mommy has to go to work, and there'll be a lot of nice little boys and girls. Oh, oh, now, don't you fret, Mrs. Lester. Sandy and I are going to be great friends. Just a minute. Here. Look. Here's a lovely dolly for Sandy. Her name is Betsy. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> now, you run along, or you'll be late for work. Sandy's going to be all right. Um, Miss Ogden, about her lunch. Oh, well, here's the menu right over here. Let's see now. We have tomato juice and lamb chop, baked potatoes, string beans, and fruit jello. And they have juice at mid morning. Oh, that's everything Sandy loves best. And now Sandy's going to meet all the other little boys and girls. And Miss Vera. That's her supervisor, a particularly well trained teacher. Oh, that's fine. But uh, perhaps I should go in with her. I mean, the first day and all. Well, uh, no, dear. It uh, makes him self-conscious when Mommy's around. <laughs> now, you just stop worrying. Everything's going to be fine. I'm sure it is. Be a good girl, Sandy, and Mommy will be back at 6 o'clock. Now, you be a good girl. Give me the doll, Sandy. So I can have it. We don't take the dollies from this room. I want my dolly. Oh, don't be a crybaby. You want the other kids to I make fun of you? With mommy. Oh, come on. <coughs> oh, quiet, quiet, all of you. Give me that doll, give it mine. You can't hurt it. I'm in their bed. You can't hurt it. That'll teach you to tease, little girl. Vera, come down here. Vera. <sighs> If you get home a little earlier on weeknights, you wouldn't be so beat every morning. No, layoff. This nursery school was your idea. And at 50 bucks and more a kid, I'd say it was a good idea. You're cutting yourself in on a sweet touch, and you know it. 
Now, come on, take them outside. And what happens when the powers that be find out how many kids you've taken in? That's my department. Now, come on, kids, line up. Miss Spirit's going to take you out the yard. The only sign of nourishing lunch for these babies was on the printed menu that adorned Miss Ogden's desk. Watered soup, sandwiches, or some kind of leftovers was the usual daily fare. A legal, properly supervised school would have sufficient teachers to prevent accidents. But teachers cost money, and that could have cut into Miss Ogden's profits. And until someone reported her, she could get away with this particular kind of murder. Don't cry, Dolly. I'll get you something to eat. I'm saying goodnight to Sandy. Look, my new darling. Oh, what that happened? Sweet? What happened to my baby? Oh, she was climbing and she fell down. It's nothing. I looked at it. Tell Grandma all about it. Miss Ogden gave me a story. Her name is Betsy. Is it a bad cut? It's nothing, I tell you. But it could have been serious. How did it happen? Oh, Sandy was trying to climb up in something or other and she fell down. This couldn't have happened if I'd been taking care of her. Oh, for goodness sake, Mother. Kids are always falling down. You know that. Lillian, you might as well admit this arrangement of yours is not working out. Sandy is being neglected. And I, for one, will not stand by and see that happen. Oh, Mother, please don't. Now, I want you to come to your senses. Otherwise, it might become very unpleasant. I'm only trying to do what hundreds of other mothers do all over the world. Work and take care of my baby. Don't cry, Mommy. Please don't cry. Like too many other working mothers with limited budgets, Lillian Lester was taken in by complete misrepresentation. After a hard day's work and a long trip on a bus to get Sandy and another trek to their home, Lillian was too tired to ask the little one many questions. She was holding down a job and her baby was with her at night. Right now, that was all the young mother could ask for. We'll continue with the case of No Questions Asked in just a moment. But first... And now, let's see how this case develops. And that's what started this whole thing about Sandy's grandmother wanting to take her away from her mother. Excuse me, Hetty. Would you please get me Miss Norris at the Department of Social Welfare? Hello, Miss Norris. This is Captain Braddock. I wonder if you'd please check on Miss Ogden and the Westwood Nursery School. Very well, Captain. I'll follow through immediately. Thank you. Hetty, thank you for coming in. So uh, And if Miss Norris verifies what you told me, I'm certain that we can help Mrs. Lester keep her baby. That's fine. Good oh, morning. Little... Oh, how do you do? I'm Miss Norris of the Department of Social Welfare. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry to interrupt. 
Just a routine inspection, you know. Oh, certainly. Shall we um, start outside in the yard? Well, all right. Uh, come along, children. We'll all go outside. Come on, there's the good boy. Come on, come on. Now, Vera's going to give you all a piece of candy. <laughs> now, I want you to be quiet, because if you hear one sound from any one of you, you're all going to get a real hard spanking. Now, do you understand? Now, don't be greedy. Now, go on, sit down. Hurry up. Where are your swings? Oh, why, I've just ordered a whole new set. And two teeter-totters. They should be delivered today. I see. This yard isn't very well kept. So many weeds and rocks. It must be raked and cleaned. Oh, yes, of course. It, it usually is. This box has nails in it. Where's the rest of the children today? Are there more children? Why, no, of course not. And what did she mean? You inquired about the rest of the children? Why, yes. You see, there's usually a lot more of them. Look what I found. Mama said you shouldn't play with matches. Oh, uh, I know what I'm doing. I understand there are usually many more children here every day. Listen, you, what are you trying to do? Make trouble? Why don't you mind your own business? Because I reckon it's about time someone told the truth about you two. She's crazy. We run this place according to Hoyle. She's just trying to make trouble. I'm not trying to do anything but straighten out a few facts. And besides... Look! It's my bedroom. I want the kids to say... Judge Harper, that could have been our old little Sandy. I understand, Mrs. Lester. Please sit down. Mrs. Lester. Yes, Your Honor. This Westward Nursery School, was it recommended to you? No, sir. I, I took the ad from a newspaper. And when you took your little girl there, did you investigate it thoroughly? Well, I saw the reception room. It looked very attractive. And it was a printed menu, good wholesome food. I see. I realize now that I made a mistake, but, well, I, I had to get to work on time for one thing, and her job was more important than her child's welfare. Mother. Judge Harper, Larry Lester was my brother, and I'm sure I don't have to tell you what his baby means to me. And I also know what she means to her mother. Lillian was willing to go to work, riding in crowded buses and streetcars, going without personal necessities, just to keep her baby home with her. Is that a crime? Well, nobody is suggesting that young Mrs. Lester is a criminal. But the point your mother makes, and it's not without merit, is the little girl has been neglected. Mrs. Lester. An investigation into this nursery school shows that they had violated all state laws in connection with the running of such an establishment. Now, uh, this could not have happened if the mothers had investigated, asked questions. Why, she didn't even know what Sandy ate for lunch each day. Is that correct? Well, I asked her each night, but she didn't seem to remember. She's only three and a half years old, Your Honor, and I was anxious to get her to bed. I didn't have time to notice very much wrong. She only went there a couple of weeks. Judge Harper, this is very painful for all of us, particularly because we've always been more than fond of our boy's wife. But all we ask is a chance to give his child proper care and a good home. Mrs. Lester? Yes, Judge Harper. You're a very young girl. And it's understandable that you want to be independent and make your own way, but you can hardly blame the baby's grandparents for their attitude. Send Captain Braddock and Miss Norris in. 
we may find an answer to some of these questions. Judge Harper. Judge. Captain. Captain Braddock, I think what Miss Norris has to say may have some bearing on this case. Yes, I agree. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time such an unhappy situation has been brought to my attention. You see, Mrs. Lester, what really happened is that you've been taken in by a racket, just about as low as they come. The practice of crowding too many children into inadequate facilities, promising care and giving nothing. And I'd like to say that the woman who ran this nursery school, along with her assistant, is being dealt with to the full penalty of the law. Miss Norris, there are some points I'd like you to throw some light on for the satisfaction of the baby's grandparents. For example, we have discussed the fact that young Mrs. Lester left the baby the very first day and didn't see the rest of the establishment. Did you ask to see it? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did, but... But Miss Ogden said something like this. Oh, no, it makes them too self-conscious when Mother comes with them. Well, that's practically exactly what she said. And there's the matter of Sandy not remembering what she had for luncheon each day. Oh, yes. Remember, Captain, I told you about that situation. Yes, and frankly, it was too much even for my jaded ears. The real reason Sandy couldn't remember what she had for lunch was that the food was so tasteless and poor that it made no impression. It was that way with the other children, too. But, Judge Harper, this doesn't mean that mothers can't work and still know that their children are being properly cared for. Actually, I can personally guarantee to secure a proper nursery school for Sandy that Mrs. Lester can afford and where she'll get the best of care. In fact, she'll get supervised play that she couldn't have in the care of an older person. Believe me, my dear, it's better for a child to have that kind of companionship. Miss Norris, when you assure me of that, I know it is so. Thank you, Judge Harper. Judge Harper, does that mean you will let me keep Sandy? I'm placing you and your problem in the capable hands of Miss Norris. I'm so grateful. Captain Braddock, I don't know what caused you to intercede for me, but I do thank you. Well, don't thank me. Thank Hetty Wilson. Hetty? Yes, yeah, she's waiting outside now to hear the good news. Don't worry, Mrs. Lester. Sandy's going to be all right. Oh, if you'd only come to me first. If you'd only come to me first. You know, Judge Harper, that's the loud wail and silent prayer, the racket squad and the welfare department and... The courts and the churches. Captain Braddock, when will the public ever learn? That's all, Mr. and Mrs. Lester. Before we close the case of No Questions Asked, I'd like to add a personal footnote. If you're looking for a nursery school, make certain that you select one that meets with these requirements of the law. Teachers trained in nursery education, nutrition, and child psychology. Proper heating facilities and fire safety. All the care and precaution of your own home. If you can't meet this problem alone, consult your local department of social welfare. It's you, the taxpayer, who supports these fine groups. And you'll find them eager to assist you. This is sound advice, so please heed it. Otherwise, what happened to others could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. See Racket Squad next week, same time, same station.